All right, guys, what is up? We are out here today. <clears throat> okay, so today we are out here discussing my thoughts on the Garmin Cash Strike. It's not in the water right now because it's dead, but I've been running it for two days straight, so as well as it should be, it is. Um, but pretty much I've got some footage to overlay, just showing you how it works and my preferences when using it. Um, hopefully you guys enjoy it. Guys, I am back at my house right now. I have my own recording that I'm going to go through with you later just to show you what it looked like for me. But essentially this is what it's supposed to look like. That red dot right there on the bottom, that's fish. That suspended dot around five foot, that's fish. Coming right off the bottom right there, maybe some fish, but it looks to be some grass. And I'll go through and I'll have to circle and point and do all this later. But as you can see, I've got it in a simulated mode, which the Garmin Cash Strike app lets you do. And I am just going to go through a couple of these features that you can go through. So as you can see, I've always had it on manual, but it can go to auto. I always run manual. I run my own gain. Um, and I always, when I'm running lower than 10 foot, I run the four four fifty five HKZ or KHZ whatever kilohertz, and then when I'm running deeper than that, I run the four sixty, and depending on depth, around eighteen foot, I usually run about fifty five percent gain, and around twenty six twenty seven thirty foot. I'm running a little bit closer to 60, 65 ish. Um, I'm always using the traditional with the A scope, but here's what it looks like without that A scope on. You just don't have that active, active bubble right there. But go back into there. More settings, turn your A scope on, and you will see now you have that flasher setting. I always run it. When I'm ice fishing, I run it with that A-scope on. When I'm not ice fishing, which I haven't used it not ice fishing, but I won't use that feature. I won't need it as much. I'm not vertical fishing underneath of it. I don't need an active sight line. A lot of the time, if I'm going to use it, say, um, what I'll be doing with it next week maybe a little bit is going down to the river and using it just to graph some very simple... Should try to see if there are any rocks, see what the depth is, all of that. Um, you can really easily use it for that. But when you're ice fishing, I would highly recommend having the A-scope feature on, or they do have... Um, where is it? View traditional flasher, which is your what a normal like a vexlar or something like that would be like i said usually even when i'm ice fishing i like to run it in the traditional with the a scope on that way i can actively see what's happening but i can also see okay so like right there there's that little clump of fish towards the bottom i can see that they were there underneath me just a second ago to know that I have to jig or just really just to see where they are. I like this view better. I'm just partial to it. I like the A-scope though because the A-scope also lets me see what's happening at the moment in active time. But right now I'm going to transition into showing you guys my footage now that I've gotten this taken care of. And just kind of showing you guys this, all the settings that I've used. So I'm going to transition to that active footage. Okay guys, couple things I wanted to explain. You'll see that it's kind of on its side. The depth and the temperature are at the top. If you need to, turn your phone to screen lock and then turn it on its side. I accidentally filmed it in portal. But what you'll see here is there's a large red patch towards the top. I was filming in about a foot and a half of ice. That's what that is. And then there's a large portion of interference around the bottom of that. I believe that's the frequency just bouncing around that that ice tube and kind of getting jumbled up and caused that interference down to about 10 foot. Like I said, at 10 foot, I would switch frequencies. So 
it really wasn't a problem past that but you can see off the bottom that I've got two specific jigs down there I've got the one that's jigging right on the bottom that little kind of looks like little rocks and then that thick line that's just straight right above it that kind of comes in and out that's also a jig um, I did notice that it would have some problems picking up jigs if they sat in the same spot for too long which really isn't a worry if you're dead sticking something but especially a smaller jig it had kind of a problem picking those up and I would kind of have to adjust my frequency for that but you can see that I'm jigging here um, there's a little perch on the bottom you can kind of see them in the A scope when I come up right there how it bulges a little bit and then it'll come down and then it'll bulge and then the line comes up really finicky small stuff I even think if I drew on this it would kind of screw it up there it is right there kind of a lot thicker I need to kind of draw that out a little bit more okay I kind of fixed it up a little bit made it a little bit longer so that you guys can see this better but there's that little perch off the bottom that I'm kind of messing with right now and you guys will see here in a minute mm, I might have pulled him up I might have actually caught that fish right there but I believe he took my bait off now there's still that one jig that's under there and then maybe I seen when I drew this out a little bit you can kind of see how that's more yellow and then it'll turn dark red I believe that's that fish coming in and out but I took that out and then I started to jig with that other jig that was kind of in and out and that's where you can see that that yellow line right there that's that perch coming back that might be a perch that might be a walleye I can't remember when I was recording this um, I do know that I caught one of the two on film though, but you can see how that kind of bridges its way to the bottom and that would be that fish looking at it. I know that it's looking at it. I can see it quite a bit more clear. The jig's turning kind of that yellowish red color and I mean it's pretty easy to see like everything. If, if you were going to buy this, that's it, especially for ice fishing. Now, I did see in some of the reviews, this clip is just me, what I believe is catching another small perch right after I dropped my bait down. But, um, I've seen a couple other reviews. I, as far as this being the highest quality, um, castable graph, I don't know. But for what you pay for it, it's only $178. So, for what you pay for it, it's pretty cheap, pretty inexpensive. And honestly, it does its job pretty well. Um, you can see here, I just jigged for that little perch. I'm pretty sure he hit, and then I'm just letting him take it right here. And then here in a split second, you see me taking it up. Alright guys, to conclude my review of the Garmin Cast Strike GPS, or Striker Cast GPS, was what this is. I keep on calling it the Cast Strike, I've called it the Cast Strike a thousand times. But to conclude my uh, my review of this, I'd probably give it a 7 out of 10, um, just because it's got its own proprietary charging system. I think it would have been a lot better if they had gone with Type-C or even an iPhone or a micro USB maybe not iPhone so much as micro USB but I'm an Android guy I always have Android chargers I've got micro USB and type C sitting in my car so I mean to make your own proprietary system just makes it harder to get a charger and we all know we lose chargers a lot um, but overall performance probably give it an 8 out of 10 uh, it could be a little bit more clear as far as the down scan goes. Uh, that was a little bit, um, what's the word, pixely. But that wasn't really a bad thing. And as far as the A-scope goes, you could see everything in real time. As far as I could tell, I got bites when I seen bites. It was just it was pretty good pretty good experience overall with this thing the only thing i really wish they would change i know that they have the capacity to is the chart feature that comes with this or the gps feature i was fishing on a small lake that i mean is pretty well known now on trenton lake out in western north dakota about probably 20 minutes southeast of williston um it did have the chart for that lake. 
but fishing some of these smaller lakes over here that are quite newer, I would expect Garmin to have the chart for it, especially since just browsing the lower ants units at, um, at Cabela's, they all have the chart for that lake, and the chart is not on the chart that comes with this, or on the little GPS feature that comes with this. However, it is nice. The river, I believe it does have the river. It did have Trenton Lake. So, why it doesn't have that small lake, I don't know. But, that's whatever. That's me being really nitpicky. As far as actual performance through the ice, through a foot and a half ice. Like, yeah, it had a couple problems with... Uh, Sometimes it would have problems picking up smaller jigs or jigs that sat still for too long. Um, I don't know why. If they're sitting still for too long, it wouldn't still pick it up, but that's not me. Um, that really wasn't a problem, though. Messed with my gain, got all my stuff back. I would suggest, unless you are under 10 foot, don't run this in auto. And definitely don't run it in that uh, 455 setting. Run it in your 260, and if you're about, if you're anywhere between 13 and 27 to 30 foot deep, about 55 to 65 percent of gain is what I found to be, is what I found to work the best. So, uh, yeah, overall review, eight out of ten. I would buy again, and I would recommend to anybody if you've got the money for this, you don't have the money for the $300. Uh, other brand i think it's low rants that produces it but i don't know the actual name of the of the sonar system at the moment i'll probably insert it somewhere around here you guys will see but uh if you don't have 300 dollars, you don't want to go out and spend it on that and really if you're just casting out into ponds all year i recommend this anyway you don't need that crisp view you're not unless you're vertically jigging underneath of it all the time like ice fishing i wouldn't even say you need that so you're probably going to be pretty good with this. I will get one of those to do an in-depth review on them, but you have to pay a monthly subscription for the app, I believe. So, I mean, that that's already a downfall. So, this is already winning in my book. Um, but when I get one of those, we will do the review on it. So, I guess I'll see you guys when that happens. But until next time, I will see you guys. Peace.